Hi, my name is Pat, and this is my channel, Book Chat with Pat, and I'm glad that you're here. Today is Saturday, March 9th, and I'd like to do a, a weekly wrap-up. First, I finished my sixth and final book for the first round of the BookTube nonfiction judging. I'll discuss the books in this round when the judging process is complete. Next, I completed uh, the Heartstopper series, um, just finishing up at the end of the week with volumes four and five of, of this series. Earlier in the week, I had posted a video on the first three volumes, <clears throat> and I'm reading all of these volumes as part of the Read 24 Banned Books in 2024, created by the great MJ at Reading This Life. I love the first three volumes, as I hope I made evident in my video earlier this, this week. I also liked the last two volumes, um, but I feel a little bit differently about these than I did about the first three. The first three, I felt, gave such a sweet picture of first love in their depiction of the growing relationship between two young teenaged boys. The books are innocent romances that give representation to gay teens who have very little representation, especially in, in literature. I didn't find volume four to be um, quite as, as sweet. Um, it's an important book, but it's a much darker one. It focuses largely on Charlie's severe eating disorder and also an OCD diagnosis. We also see Nick's totally dysfunctional family with a bullying older brother and a largely absent father. There's nothing offensive or dangerous to children in this volume, nothing that should have warranted the book being challenged and or banned as it has been in many places. The fourth book felt different to me from the first three, though, because of these heavy issues all coming to a head. <clears throat> but they're also critical and important issues in the lives of many teens. In the fifth volume, the boys are older. Nick is getting ready to go off to college, <clears throat> and there is a lot of talk about taking their relationship to the next level. It seems to me that the last volume is probably directed at an older high school audience. Um, I love the whole series together, all together, and I think these are are really important books, and I think they're books that, that should be available um, to, to kids. Uh, they give representation to a, a group that is grossly underrepresented in, in literature today. <clears throat> I also focused this week on the poetry of Seamus Heaney in support of the Irish Readathon. I reread um, volumes of Heaney's collected poems that span the duration of, of, his, of his career. Um, I'm continuing in my ongoing reading of Middlemarch by George Eliot. I'm reading this in um, the, the read-along that is sponsored by Classics and Company and the discussion of Middlemarch is being led by the wonderful Kim at Middle of the Book March. And as I've said before, I'm also counting Middlemarch <clears throat> because my copy is 845 pages, I think, um, for the March of the Mammoths. So I'm, I'm, meeting, I'm meeting the criteria of, of several challenges um, with with, with, uh, with Middlemarch. Um, <clears throat> I've completed three of the nine prompts uh, for March Mystery Madness. 
I talked last week about the first book that I had read for the prompts. That was for prompt three, Nine Lives, read a book with a cat on the cover. And I had read um, and talked about last, last weekend, Ghostly Paws by Leanne Dobbs. Um, the cat was my favorite character in, in that book. I've also completed um, prompt eight, uh, which is read the ninth book in a series. <clears throat> and for that, I read John Banville's newest novel, The Lockup. The Lockup is the ninth in the Quirk series. And because Banville, Banville is, an, is an Irish author, this novel also counts toward my participation in the Irish readathon. Banville started writing the Dr. Cork series in 2005. His first mystery novel, Christina Falls, was published in 2007 under the name Benjamin Black. The novel focused on a melancholy, heavy drinking pathologist at the Dublin coroner's office, Dr. Quirk. He's mostly just referred to as Quirk. <clears throat> that Black was really John Banville was never really a secret. Reviewers were aware of it, booksellers were aware of it. I think most readers probably knew as well. Um, in a New York Times article in 2020, Banville said that he hates his own work. He considers it an embarrassment, including his literary fiction, written under the name John Banville, for which he won the Booker Prize. But he wasn't going to risk writing mystery novels, he said, as John Banville. He initially thought that he would just be one and done, that he, there would be one Quirk novel. But it was so popular um, that he continued with the series, and he's now completed nine volumes. Um, the black mystery novels have a very different style from his, what we would call, literary fiction. And they gained for him an entirely new readership. In 2020, with the publication of a new mystery with a new character, Detective Inspector Sinjin Stafford, Banville made the decision to drop Benjamin Black and write his mysteries as himself, as John Banville. According to an article from October 1, 2020, in the New York Times, Banville said, quote, Black graciously allowed himself to be killed off. He went on to explain that in his own rereading of the Benjamin Black books, he decided that they were really quite good. He went on, quote, when I found out that I liked the Black books, I said to myself, why do I need this rascal anyway? So I shut him in a room with a pistol and a vial of sleeping pills and a bottle of scotch, and that was the end of him. So in the lockup, Banville brings both Detective Inspector Sinjin Stafford and Dr. Quirk to the case of Rosa Jacobs in Dublin in the 1950s. <clears throat> Rosa Jacobs, age 27, is a graduate student in history when she is found dead. Quirk, at this time, is mourning the death of his wife, who was killed in the previous volume in the series. Stafford shot and killed the person who shot Quirk's wife, but he had been unable to save her. There's a tremendous amount of tension between these two investigators, and they don't particularly like each other. Both are called in to investigate Rosa Jacobs' death when she is found in a car in a closed garage or lockup 
dead from carbon monoxide poisoning. It appears at first that Rosa Jacobs has committed suicide, but it doesn't take Quirk very long to determine that this was no suicide and that she was in fact drugged and knocked out and left in the car in order to make it look like she was committing suicide. And so the hunt for her murderer begins. <clears throat> Tracking down who did it takes us into a maze of corrupt political, church, and university figures. No spoilers here. Banville creates atmosphere. Dublin of the 1950s and German concentration camps in the 1940s in powerful language, powerful, vivid uh, imagery. The plot is somewhat slow to develop, but he creates his characters in fine detail and through terrific dialogue. <clears throat> his prose style is magnificent. I like the novel a great deal, with the exception of the epilogue, which I found to be very frustrating and, and it felt a bit almost tacked on um, at, at the end. Uh, but we won't talk about that in the interest of avoiding um, spoilers. Finally, I also completed prompt nine in the um, mystery challenges, um, which is an open-ended prompt. Um, to read a book with a nine anywhere in it, could be nine chapters, nine, nine in the ISBN number, um, any, just a nine somewhere. It's a very open-ended prompt. So for that, I read John Buchan's The 39 Steps. <clears throat> this novel not only um, satisfies the prompt for March Mystery Madness, but it's also this month's reading for Roger's Cheap Old Book Club on Michael K. Vaughn's challenge, channel. So I'm doing a bit of triage here and I'm combining multiple events where I can. So. The 39 Steps is a novella written in 1915 by the Scottish writer John Buchan, and it is also the basis for um, several, four, I think, movies of the same name from 1935, 1959, 1978, and 2008. And there is also currently um, a Netflix series um, based on the book in production right now, and it is expected to air in 2025. This is also the first of five books that Buchan wrote featuring the main character, Richard Hannay. Hannay finds himself arriving back home in London after having made a fortune as a mining and engineer in Rhodesia. He's feeling bored with life as it is now when suddenly his life is turned absolutely upside down. A neighbor, Franklin Scudder, arrives at his door one day and asks if he can hang out in Hannay's flat for a few days. Scudder, a journalist, has uncovered a plot to assassinate the premier of Greece. And this is an event designed, Scudder believes, to trigger a world war in Europe. And now he's a wanted man. He has already faked his own death and he's planning to disappear completely. Hane allows Scudder to hang out in his flat temporarily. Within a few days, however, Hane arrives home to find that Scudder is dead, for real this time. He's been murdered, presumably by the people whose murderous plot he had uncovered. Hane wants to alert the authorities about this plot, and he takes with him Scudder's coded notes that detail his findings. 
The rest of the novella depicts Hannay's adventures as he runs around London and then mostly Scotland, most of the book takes place in, in Scotland, trying to evade the conspirators who are now after him. He narrates his own story and he has a very witty way of telling about his many near-death experiences. I won't say more about the plot because I want to avoid spoilers. It's an important little book, mostly because it was the first of its kind. It's probably the earliest example of the innocent man on the run trope in spy thrillers. It's also a great example of the innocent man who puts his own life in jeopardy for the good of the country. I loved it. And now I want to rewatch some of the movies. I think I will start with Alfred Hitchcock's movie from 1935. Although from what I've read, I think the one from 1978 directed by Don Sharp is actually most faithful to the novel. So that's the wrap up for this week. I will be back again soon with more banned books, more mysteries, and more Irish poetry. As always, I thank you for watching. I hope that you're doing well, and I'll speak with you again soon. Take care.